Today's thoughts are about dual nature. We sort of assume that everything has either this nature or that nature. And when something has both the natures, dual nature, we are sort of surprised. For us, it's like something is solid or something is liquid. But when it's a paste, we are sort of, you know, lost because we don't know when paste on becoming how runny really becomes a liquid. So is toothpaste a solid? Probably yes. Is honey a liquid? Probably yes. We are not very sure. So one issue is with the thing that lies at the cusp at the point at which the distinction is supposedly being made uh, the other is the other issue is really in the matter of knowledge itself you see we understand things only by categorizing them and to categorizing things we sort of carry this this knife with us and we cut everything which we see and we kind of divide it into two different things and then say oh yeah this is that and we put it in that shelf and thus our knowledge grows so so say for example black and white oh this person is black this person is white but really there are brown persons there are yellow persons and really Barack Obama is he black or is he white and I mean I don't know Michael Jackson was he black or was he white he looked more white to me uh, towards the end uh, then he looked black anyway um, citizen and alien that that kind of a thing heterosexual homosexual but then really I, is is this demarcation so hard and so clear or is it that primarily the sexual nature that we have is sort of fluid just like you know vegetarian and non-vegetarian human beings eat everything it's only culture that makes us say oh i'm vegetarian oh i'm non-vegetarian is it really that that yes i might like non-vegetarian more somebody else might like vegetarian more i don't know somebody might like a person of their own sex more somebody might like a person of the opposite sex more but then is is there is there such a hard divide between the two categories i don't think so look at the hardest divide possible uh, i'm recording this on a digital device what does the digital device store things as zero or a one now what is a zero or a one it is a certain level of voltage at a certain point now that again is a decision something has to make all right if it's above this level say for example if it's above 2.5 it's 1 if it's below 1.5 it's 0 now in reality it is not digital and again what of the information that the so-called digital stuff is carrying what is important is really the information not so much the 0 or the 1 in matters of persons the color of color of skin to me it doesn't really matter if a person is black or white or yellow or brown what matters to me is that that is a person the same way I don't fucking give a damn if a person is the citizen of a particular country or not he's a human being or she's a human being the same is true of sexuality I don't care who I love so long as I love that person and get love from that person and I think that's the way it should be for everyone let's get to one more level of this what about male and female I'm, I'm not talking about the, the 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 biological plumbing aspect of it but I'm talking about the, the gender aspect of it what is expected of people now if I am a male I'm expected to have some kind of facial hair or at least some hint of them being there I'm expected to be aggressive and brave I'm supposed to be the earning member of the family depending on you know culture to culture and so many other things and if I'm a female then I'm supposed to be to be beautiful and soft and you know if as a man uh, if I have soft boobs 
then people are like, oh shit, how is that possible? So, uh, you know, the, the problem is that a female by gender, in other words, by social performance, gender is social performance, I don't, don't, don't ever think that it's a hard reality. It's just a social performance. A woman is supposed to be soft, is supposed to be submissive. In our, our culture, she's almost a property of the concerned male there. Could be the father, could be the brother, could be the husband, sometimes even the son. So, um, so it's just a social performance. And if you are a big woman who's good at fighting, like say for example in Game of Thrones, you have Brienne of Tarth, then most people have problems with that. And if you're like Renly Baratheon, uh, that's, that's a, one of the contenders to the kingship who, uh, who's gay. And uh, I mean, I don't know if he knows that word gay, but he certainly enjoys having sex and loving a person of his own um, biological plumbing rather than that of the opposite side. So... So people get like thoroughly shocked. Yin and Yang. Yin is supposed to be, as far as I remember, the feminine quality and Yang the masculine property. But what we must remember is what Kung Fu Panda 3 tells us. What does it tell us? It tells us that Po really has both those qualities. He's a healer. He's a carer. He's, he loves people. He's compassionate because that's what pandas are. Cute and fluffy and caring. I mean, that's how they've been developed there. They are the ones who send chi to other people to repair them, to heal them. On the other hand, he's also a dragon warrior who's the fucking <laughs> greatest warrior there can be. And there you have both the things coming together in the same person and that's when the person becomes really great. So if you want to be really great, you got to straddle that stupid socially constructed divide. Otherwise, you cannot be great. You cannot even understand things well enough. You'll just divide them in various categories and you'll be lost in that you'll say this is personal this is professional you'll say this is scientific this is religious and you'll forever be lost in those two categories you will never know what reality really is so coming to the real discussion which i wanted to do in terms of this so-called dual nature now the first time i heard this phrase I was like thoroughly shocked because I thought everything was either a particle or a wave I was always told you know you can either be good or evil and uh, you, you can either be a you something can either be a particle or a wave but then come light I was told oh no 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 it's it's a particle as well as a wave and that's when when I <laughs> when the light was thrown on light it you know the bulb just came on that things are not this way or that way they are fucking all the way everything has to be understood holistically so particle and wave or is it really a field how do we know maybe the reality is that it's a field which presents itself to us as a particle when we want to see it as a particle or when we have to see it as a particle and presents itself to us as a wave you know what so so uh, uh, you take one more step beyond that and then uh, we we figure out that we start looking at the nature of a thing of what we want it to be the nature seems to be what we want it to be and uh, 
come quantum mechanics you're thoroughly fucked because it tells us two things or or maybe it tells only only one thing and i have sort of uh, misunderstood it uh, what it sort of says is that as we measure momentum position gets disturbed and as we mention, uh, measure position momentum gets disturbed so we can get to understand only one thing fully not the other thing now it's mechanistically very easy for me to understand you know to see something you have to throw something at that you know uh, like some kind of a particle so you're able to see my hand because light particles so called particles photons are being thrown at my hand and they're going back to you and now since my hand is much bigger than a photon the photons probably do not disturb my hand very much but when we get to very small particles there is a disturbance which is so high that we can't measure arbitrarily perfectly either of those things only one of those things we can measure we can't measure both of those things so that's that's one thing uh, that it tells us and i'm sure the photon disturbs my 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 hand also but but maybe to uh, to such a small extent that we can as well ignore it sort of for all practical purposes but the other thing which quantum mechanics tells us is that things don't really exist it's not just a measure just just uh, a matter of how well you can measure it but that things don't exist unless you observe them say for example if i were to switch off all the lights in this room and if i were to ensure that not a single photon enters this room or is created within this room would you see me would you see my hand obviously not because there'll be no photon hitting my cheek and coming back to you so you will not see me so whether i exist or don't exist you won't know unless you actually try and observe me this can also be you know most of us play games video games today or at least we have seen somebody play it and my nephews play regularly the, the different games on 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 my mobile phones and you know what they see only only that part of the scenery is created where they have gone what they are observing where they've got to hunt something or kill something or drive something only that part is created the other part is really not there so is it is it not there or is it that is it that we can actually never know without seeing without observing maybe it's there but we won't know unless we look at it and when we look at it then only we actually see it so so this this whole thing is is uh, is is rather mind boggling and just give me a second to read what i wrote here so like i said um our mind presents colors only when there is a light being thrown at it only when we are looking at it um shutting us cat and so forth so uh, so again we don't i don't really understand it well enough but what to me makes a lot of sense is that no ability no ability is only that of a mind mediated reality you see you cannot know what cannot be fathomed by a mind it may very well exist but we cannot know it unless that reality is mediated by our mind so for example um i don't know there's this this mouse here now i'm looking at this mouse and to me it's three dimensional but the fact of the matter is in both my eyes the image is actually upside down right and it's two dimensional it's my mind which is creating an upright three dimensional 
so-called reality for me. So knowability is only that of a mind-mediated reality. We cannot know what cannot be fathomed by a mind. We cannot know anything unless it is fathomed by a mind. See, we cannot assume that everything that can exist can be understood by a mind. How can we assume that? We only know things that we understand. Only that those things that our mind can, can grapple with, can give us a picture of magnetic fields. Until and unless I have equipment, I'll not know whether it exists or doesn't exist. And thus there could be a huge, 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 huge reality which I may never fathom. Dark matter. Today we have, we believe it exists, but we have no way of knowing what it is. Really. I mean, is it something which, which our mind can never fathom? Is it that we will never find equipment and tools which will, uh, which will be able to, uh, which will be able to uh, sense those for us? And how do we even know that that is the only thing that we don't know? What about? things that we can't know that we can't know what about those things that we cannot know that we cannot know say for example if ours was a two-dimensional reality how would we fathom the third dimension hmm? imagine people living on a two-dimensional world they will always see a tetrahedron as a triangle no matter which two-dimensional plane they are living in they cannot see anything other than a triangle whatever plane they are living in I'm, I'm just talking about the three uh, or whatever four planes of a tetrahedron how many planes are there in tetrahedron i don't know i'm lost forget it that's not the main point the main point is that we live in three dimensions or maybe in four dimensions if we think time is the fourth dimension but what if there are totally eight dimensions or 5336 dimensions how can we know about those dimensions? We don't sense those dimensions at all. So, my point is that we cannot assume that everything that exists can be understood by a mind. Similarly, everything that can be imagined by a mind need not necessarily exist. It might, it might not. So, so let me give you an example of that. Uh, it's rather an, an earthy example, which, which I like giving earthy examples. I can imagine, I can imagine licking Marilyn Monroe's pussy all night. But that cannot come to exist, can it? Uh, now that she is dead. And forget whether I would actually find her pussy as delectable as I imagine it to be. One whole night, remember? Twelve hours, mostly at a stretch. I don't know. But sounds very delectable. It's imaginable for me. Can't happen, doesn't happen, not reality. So, let's not, what is the whole point of all this? Let's not get lost in categorizations. Let's not get lost in the cutting and dicing that we do in order to understand things. Let's look at the whole. See, the problem today is that we cut everything 
and then we look only at that part of it. We look at the physics of something, say cosmos. We look at the chemistry of cosmos. We look at the biology within that cosmos. We look at the cosmology of the cosmos. And within that we look at the that cosmology which is presented by theoretical physicists. And we look at that which is presented by a million plus one uh, religious people uh, based on whatever fancy idea they have about how the world came into being or what all it is. What we all need to do is that while we have to be expert in some things, while we have to have vertical knowledge in some matters, we have to have substantial horizontal knowledge of all the things that come into our lives because only then can we look at things holistically if we don't look at things holistically we will forever be condemned to hate because we hate what we don't know we hate what we don't understand you see Muslims hate Hindus those who do because they don't understand what those people stand for, what their lives are. And those Hindus that hate Muslims, they do because they don't know what those Muslims stand for. And of course, there are many, 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 an increasing number of Muslims who hate other Muslims because they simply don't want to understand what those other people stand for. So Shias and Sunnis hate Ahmadis, Shias hate Sunnis, Sunnis hate Shias, fuck everything fuck everything really fuck everything just be free free your mind from these categorizations only then when will you get a smattering of understanding you will still not know what is occurring in 2326th dimension and I will never taste Marilyn Monroe's pussy. Bye-bye. <laughs>